Hello and welcome to another Turing Dev Talks. This is Jose, your host for the day, and I'm sitting from Montreal, Canada. And for our discussion today, I would like to welcome Ellen, which joined us from Lansing, Michigan. And Ellen is a senior site rehabilitation engineer at Turing and has more than 11 years of experience in the software industry. He started his career as a software developer, but later moved to DevOps. And he is an expert when it comes to AWS. And today he will be here to talk about AWS IAM. And honestly, Ellen, I'm very excited to speak with you today. And so without further ado, let's let's get dive into our discussion. Okay. First of all, uh, thanks a lot for joining us today. And how are you doing? And what how is the work treating you? Oh, I'm doing pretty well today. I've been uh, and uh, mostly working on some um, uh, monitoring and observability stuff. I've uh, got to get all those metrics out there so we know exactly how things are going. Oh, and I know it's not related to what we're talking about today, but that is what I've been working on. And it's yeah, been going that, pretty well. Nice. That sounds like a perfect mixture of work and family and so fun. And I know that you are really famous in the game industry. Maybe we uh, can not, talk about not that. Not that famous, <laughs> but uh, uh, there is, you know, one little one little video game at which I am legitimately the best player in the world. You are a genius, man. Yeah, believe me. All right, Alien. So I have uh, heard some cool things about you. Uh, mm -hmm. Could you tell our developers fellow here, what do you do a part of working for Turing? Well, Ella, I tend to play a, a various retro video games a lot. I sometimes even stream them on Twitch, which if you're familiar with twitch.tv. And one of the ones that, ones that I do the most is one called Bangayo on Dreamcast. I'm actually legitimately the best player in the world at that, at least at playing it quickly, and have performed it at SGDQ, a large charity event. Nice, man. So you are so kind, but you are a legend, okay? Oh, well, thanks for sharing this information, and let's get back to our video. All right. All right. So um, let's now dive deep in our discussion for the day, okay? So... Let's start understanding what is AWS IAM. Could you please uh, tell us a little bit about that? All right. So first of all, all we can say what it stands for. It's Amazon, Amazon Web Services Identity Access Management. So what does that mean? Identity and access management is how you do generally permissions for things within your or Amazon Web Services account. In other words, for very various data, various, uh, you know, cloud infrastructure, mm -hmm. things like that, and how you have permissions of what is able to access what and who is able to access what. And there's a decent amount of uses for it, and it underlies uh, is kind of a little bit of everything, because if you need to be able to access a thing, you need to have the, have the correct permissions within IAM. Nice. So we can say that it's basically a centralized access management for AWS, right? Which is quite important and useful services, I would say, right? Yeah, it's pretty well designed. I really enjoyed working with it over the years. It uh, allows uh, some really fine, fine grained permissions if you need it, need it uh, less fine grained if you don't. But I tend to be a uh, pretty staunch advocate, especially considering doing like site reliability engineer stuff now of of the you know absolute minimum limited access of exactly what anything needs, which tends to go pretty well using IAM. Right. Okay. And, and besides uh, beside being an access manager, what more? Uh, what are some other features that IAM can be really, uh, I would say, helpful or develops out there? Well, you can and do stuff within IAM to M to alter and change that ability ability to access certain things and there's all kinds of great ways to set it up like one of the thing, things I like using the most most and most often is using the role based access features and assigning roles to a server so that server is what actually has the rights rather than that specific bit of code that tends to work very conveniently when doing a good a modern high availability setup other nice. than that, add it's add it even has as stuff for multi-factor authentication, actually authenticating people through Amazon and all kinds of other useful things. Amazing. So, um, does it come alongside uh, one's AWS account or needed to be accessed separately? It is right there within your AWS account, and uh, and if you're doing and if you're doing any sort of sort of multi-user stuff within your AWS account, if you have, you know, oh, any other users you're having log into it, you're going to get very familiar with it very quickly. 
Nice. All right. So, and now that we know its features and it's also free to use, I think. So, yeah, I think it will... IAM is generally free to use, unlike many of the, the uh, different AWS services, which are pay as you go and oh, and have costs associated with them. IAM generally doesn't because it kind of underlies everything else. It's it is you know there to make everything else work. Nice. And actually, this is my next question for you. Uh, how how does that work? How uh, AWS IAM works? All right. So there's multiple ways you can administer it, but uh, in the end, and what it is is that everything when you're accessing any service through AWS through any mm -hmm. any form or from a server or whatever, AWS has to authenticate that whatever it is is allowed to access that service. And IAM is effectively where it looks up what kind of accesses it has. It looks through looks through and says, okay, because of the role that this server has, it has this, this level of access to this thing, and that is actually what's needed. Or, oh, you're trying to access this thing, which actually isn't associated with that thing because you never told it it was. And nope, you're yeah. not allowed to access that thing. That's that's a lot of what IAM does. Nice. And so you talk that it uh, comes free with AWS, right? Yep, yep. It is just a you know part and parcel of how you manage access within AWS. It does not cost any extra money over anything else. Else, it is the you know very basic way of managing what has access to what, and does not incur additional charges like so many AWS things do. Okay. And so, uh, do we have to use the same credentials every time, or how does that work with multiple users? Well, AWS IAM allows you to create user accounts with whatever credentials you want. You can create new user accounts that have more limited access than your main account. Out, and you can create whatever credentials you want, including enforcing or saying that they use two-factor and things like that. Nice. And most of the time when you set up someone's password, of course, they automatically are made to change it when they log in. So they know what their password is, but you don't, which is always the preferred. Nice. Great. That's, that all feels so seamless. But between IAM users and Federate existing users, how do we manage all the access and the authorization? Well, that's exactly what IAM is set up to do. You can federate users in, in from very various things that it supports through the API. And, and sure, it'll take some work to get everything integrated exactly the way you want, but that's exactly what IAM is written to do. That's, that's why it exists in a lot of ways. All right. So, and let's suppose, okay, we have a scenario. We have two developers, okay, mm -hmm. and they all have access to S3 buckets, for example. Mm -hmm. um, can I set up two different permissions or policy for one for each user, which says uh, these users can uh, upload files, can read and can delete files, and this one not, just read files? Sure, as long as you don't mind that you're having to make separate roles, and that is a little bit of overhead to have to do, but you then can give, you know, you can either attach it to the user, which I actually don't suggest, or the more sane way is you make a role for each of those users that you put them in, and so you end up being able to put users in classes, so like, you know, this specific um, class of user, which may, may be like a DevOps engineer, has this level of access to all the things. This one who may be, you know, a QA developer, he has access to these things and things like that. Okay, so I uh, will create like um, a high level user and oh, high level policy and say, okay, set this user for that policy and then I can reuse that policy for many other users, right? Yes, exactly. That's one of the major advantages of role-based policies like that. However, you can individually attach policies like that to users. Generally, a piece of IAM is called, pol is called a policy. That's one of the sort of big, big things about how IAM works. And a policy can be either attached to a role or directly attached to really any object within IAM, which includes a user. All right. That was great. Thanks for sharing this. Awesome. Now, Elena, we talk about all these features in policy and how IAM works, but I think our discussion would be incomplete without talking about ABAC or attribute based in access control. So what is ABAC for AWS and how does it compare with the traditional RBAC model? 
All right, so AVAC, the or attribute-based access control, oh, assign ions effectively sort of roles based on tags that you assign to things. And it can make things somewhat easier and a little bit more open when using it. And however, it can also be a little less secure if not completely configured properly. But when configured properly, it can allow your developers to, to make new stuff and uh, faster and innovate more. Interesting, really interesting. I'm sure that we do give our developers a good idea of A, B, and C, and R, B, A, C, and remove it a lot of doubts, okay? And here I would like to call upon our senior developers out there who are willing to work remotely with companies in US. So we have over a hundred technologies, including AWS. So if you are confident with your tech stack, okay, head on turing.com slash jobs and apply now then you'll get the job as I and Ellen did. So Ellen, this has been a great discussion and I think it's time to bring our talk to a close. But before that, uh, I would like to ask you to share some tips and how they can be prepared for their interview for AWS IM. Well, one of the biggest things is to actually read the documentation within AWS, maybe play A with AWS I am a bit if you have, haven't experienced it that much. The actual Amazon documentation for it is generally really good. Other than that, at, uh, well, a lot of the same things you do for any interview, make sure that your audio sounds good, make sure that there aren't distractions that are gonna come in, that sort of thing. Nice, that was uh, helpful. Uh, and so this is a personal question, okay? Uh -huh. So how would you keep yourself up to date? Well, I keep myself up to date, one, by actually following the developer blogs on Amazon. On AWS, it actually has some pretty good uh, like blog posts about out their new mm -hmm. features that are coming out, and they're actually really useful. Other than that, at uh, you know reading good tech news sites like Y Combinator or Slashdot or things like that are often very helpful for kind of industry-wide things, which which is always useful to know what's going on a little bit industry-wide, no matter how you know deeply you're diving into specific topics in your job. So thanks for sharing this. So that was uh, nice and valuable information. I hope our audience enjoyed this discussion as much as I did. And that will be a wrap for our site. Okay, thank you so much for turning in. Uh, if you have any query, any question, if you want to ask us any question, feel free to reach us out at support at touring.com and let us know in the comment section below if you find this video helpful. Uh, don't forget to give us the big fat thumbs up and subscribe to our channel if you are not subscribed already. So again, Alan, thanks a lot and I hope to see you again. All Take right, care. thank you. I look forward to seeing the comments on the video. Thank you.